Hello, welcome to the Agent Based Discovery video where we'll talk all about Alice Agent, how to use it, when to use it, and more. But before I start, let's watch a short video that explains Alice Agent and its use cases. Landsweeper discovers any IT environment by scanning the network and gathering device information remotely. But some situations require the asset itself to send its data back to Landsweeper. For example, laptops out on the road won't always connect to your network. Devices at remote locations may have limited network connectivity, or certain mission-critical systems could operate behind strict firewalls. LS Agent is our solution to these situations. It's a small, lightweight application that you can install on your Windows, Mac, and Linux devices. It gathers the asset data locally and then sends it back to your Landsweeper installation, either via direct push or through Landsweeper's cloud-hosted relay service. When using this second method, LS Agent uploads your scanned data to the relay server where it is encrypted and stored safely, waiting for your Landsweeper installation to come and fetch it. LS Agent is the go-to solution to keep track of those difficult to scan devices and stay in control of all your assets, wherever they are. So now that we have an understanding of the basics of LS Agent, let's take a look at the architecture and how it fits into the Landsweeper architecture itself. Now, as you can see, um, obviously, the agents are installed on devices and then have two options of sending that data back. Option one is the most popular one, using the relay server. Obviously, since it is an agent and since it's capable of scanning devices outside of the network, uh, the relay server is needed to actually send that information back to your Landsweeper installation. So how it works is that the, lo or the local scans that are performed by Alice Agent are sent to the relay server where they're securely stored and wait for your Landsweeper scanning server to go and fetch them. Um, now the alternative option is using a direct server connection. So you can let LS Agent directly send the information to your scanning server, but the big but there is that obviously there needs to be a connection between the LS Agent device and the scanning server. So that usually means that you'll need kind of a VPN to be active. Um, you can configure both. Um, so in that way, if the direct connection fails, it falls back to the relay server. So that way, if you have um, a lot of employees that um, obviously they use a VPN to work from home, but maybe sometimes you know, their connection isn't fully stable or they, you know, they work while they're um, on the road, we're traveling. That way you still have kind of that backup safety method to ensure that you're always still scanning the device at a decent interval. Now, as you might've seen in the video that we watched earlier, um, there are certain advantages to using Alice Agents. Obviously when a device is behind you know, a, a firewall that is very strict, if it's in a DMZ, things like that, that's where you will likely want to use Alice Agent. But also, um, we have customers that use it simply because they do not want to add credentials to Landsweeper. They just want to use the agent. Now, there are benefits and downsides of using the agent. Obviously, benefits being that you can scan assets that go outside of your network. Uh, downside is that if you just use Alice Agent, you're only scanning what you install Alice Agent on. So actually, you're just scanning inventory that or assets that you already know exist. And that's where you kind of lose that capability of really discovering devices that you might not know exist or um, that you're not aware of. Um, also, obviously, network devices are a big component as well of ensuring that you have a view of your entire IT infrastructure. Um, and Alice Agents is just, is, you know, it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, but obviously it's not an agent that you can use to discover network devices, et cetera. Lastly, I want to touch on the different agents that we have. Now, the go-to option for everyone will always be LS Agent. Um, we do have an older agent um, that, we, uh, that we've used for a number of years before we had LS Agent, which is called LS Push. You might find some references uh, throughout the knowledge base, et cetera, on LS Push. And there is a full knowledge base article as well that details the exact differences between LS Agent and LS Push. I'm going to cover some of them briefly here, the most important ones, but if you want a full kind of overview of what, you know, when should I use Alice Push, when should I use Alice Agent, you can go to the Knowledge Base article to get that full overview of the differences between the two. Now, generally speaking, uh, Alice Push, the main use case for Alice Push is that you can use it in a group policy object, um, and you can use it as a logon script. That means that um, when looking specifically at Landsuper and how it scans users, it is interesting to use LS push 
to ensure that your user scanning and your user scanning timestamps are completely accurate. Um, what I mean by that is that when Landsweeper scans a user or scans a machine, um, it will also scan its users. And the timestamp that it says for when was, the, when was this user logged in is actually the timestamp of when that device was scanned. So it shows when that user or when the device was scanned and what user was logged in at that point in time. Now, if you want an accurate overview of when users log into the device, which is different, that's when you'll need to use Alice Push because Alice Push is able to run as somebody logs in as a logon script. And that way you have a accurate overview and accurate inventory of when specific accounts log in. Whereas if you were to use Alice Agent, somebody can log in, log out. Um, somebody else, you know, person B, let's say, can log in. And when the scan takes place during the login of person B, you would have no idea that person A would have logged in whatsoever. Um, so that's a very specific use case for Alice Push. One of the few use cases that customers still use Alice Push is for that specific reason. Um, but if you're interested in, like I mentioned, all of the details between, all the difference between Alice Agent and Alice Push, you can head over to the Knowledge Base article. But you know, that being said, Alice Agent is by far the most used one, obviously before the use cases, for the use cases that we've explained this already and the use cases that have been set in the video as well. Um, so with that, I think I've covered everything there of agent-based discovery. So you can head over to the next videos to learn more.